Hi, I'm Otto Bravado. The video that you'll see today, I promise I will not be wearing a suit. You're going to see me get my hands dirty. There will be a video at the end that shows what he did for my life and might explain better why I had so much motivation that you'll see at the end to do a huge hack repair that, believe it or not, actually holds up. So, follow the, the repair to the end, and when you're done, I'm going to overshare. I'm going to share something terrible that happened to me that uh, I hope will have, be of help to others. God bless. All right. It's running smooth now. How did we get it to run smooth? Hmm. My buddy promised me he needed new coils. I was like, uh, okay, it could be injectors. He's like, no, I know it's coils. I was like, okay, but what about diagnosis? Uh, he'd already had diagnosis done. And it was mostly on. We'll see what really happens. Like this at work, but every time someone comes for one thing, I'll do a little bit more than I'm getting paid for because I always want to do it at work and you're not allowed to. So it feels really good to look into it deeper. And I'm thinking that there is this crossover bar. I don't know what to call it, but I can see it. This crossover bar right here, mm -hmm. that whole piece of metal looks like it comes off separately. I mean, I'm looking at I turned it to ask you to turn off just so I could reach underneath and fill. But I see bolts, the hook from underneath. I mean, good gosh, that's too hot to touch. But I'm thinking underneath there is bolts to take this whole bar off, this line back here. And that bar looks separate from the intake. Because it's got its own bolts and it's got its own space around and underneath the alternator. So probably pull the alternator and get that bar off. And because that's what's leaking. I don't think your intake's leaking because it's pouring right out of here. Well, what's the, well, I mean, don't I need the bar though? Huh? Don't I need the bar? Oh, yeah. I, I'm saying take it out and put a new seal and then put it back. I'm sure the bar is good. It's a seal that's bad. And if you look, your intake runners are plastic right behind, and that's a totally separate piece. But what do you think possibly is the reason why they, they said that is so that when they take it out, it doesn't break uh, the, the whole thing or whatever, I mean that it's off plastic. I mean that it's plastic. Um, I think they because went think for... Like sometimes with plastic, when you pull something apart, you end up having to buy a bigger piece. Yeah, that's true. That's the dangerous thing about doing intake jobs mm -hmm. is there are a hundred of things to break along in the way. Because the bar that you're talking about, or the bar... It's near that bar of my fuel line. Oh no, your I mean your fuel injector is right next to it, but you got your fuel line across here and across here, and they are both they are both separate. The intake separate too. I mean, seeing as how I can't truly see in there, can I guarantee that your intake isn't leaking? No, I can't. There's a possibility that that seal is the intake and it's not this bar. But because this is the easier thing to go after, it's tempting. You know what we could do? What's that? If you still have time, we could pull these coils and actually look inside the cylinder. And if you have clean cylinders mm -hmm. it was and dirty only, cylinders. It was only on one side. Dude. That was the whole thing. Having well, yeah, checked. because the, this whole bar has its, has a seal on it the way it sits on the base and sits on the engine. I think it's like a coolant crossover from this side of the engine to this side of the engine so both sides can get fed. And see, the only reason why those two went bad is because it's leaking the oil into the coolant into those two. The rest of those are good. My concept is, is if we pull a spark plug mm -hmm. and we look in there and it's really clean, that means coolant's getting into combustion. Mm -hmm. And if coolant's getting into combustion, then yeah, we have to go for the intake to fix it. But if it's not, there's no evidence that coolant's getting in there, then it's going to be this bar. That's how we can separate it out. So we do, we know what we're doing instead of guessing that, well, that didn't leak. We got rid of this leak, so now it's leaking. Yeah, they said it was just that whole thing right there. That was the whole thing. That's how they tried to chop it up, like said it was the whole intake. Like, and if they were wrong, how bad would they feel going in there and, and fixing a leak right here? 
Probably not that bad. But I would feel bad. Because I'd rather do the smaller job if that's what's all that's needed. Gabriel's idea is not bad. He's gonna he gets a, a rag. That might actually help. And if you want, you can have my other dirty rag from today. And you can trade that out. It might help. Until we can get that other seal done. But it's gonna wipe down there for the back foot. And that's why you still have this squeaky belt. Okay. Yeah. Alright, let's see if this coolant comes back. If we got rid of his leak, he won't hear that squeal anymore when this gets wet. Well, we're watching it. Oh, man. Okay, I, I clearly saw the mineral trail that it was leaking from up top where the seal we, we replaced. However, it is still leaking at the base. So that seal at top didn't work. This base right here is leaking. This base is still leaking. Look how fast it's pouring out. I blew that off and it's already full of coolant. But what is it leaking into though? Huh? What is it leaking into though? The coils. Still. Yeah, so we're not. So the full fit. The heat up. Is it still doing it there? I'm sure. So we're leaking at the base of that. So, uh, it's good to confirm your repair because sometimes it runs poorly because you didn't get a boot on right. So I'm just struggling to get that on correctly to an 8 millimeter. And I uh, have to say, this isn't turning at all as I, I, I work it. The goal right now is to run it and get rid of the air bubbles over in the coolant reservoir. When you can't see any more bubbles, you're done. Is it still bubbling? Yes, it is. All right, so we still have to get the bubbles done. And I don't want to interrupt that. And I need to get this on right. I noticed it was running rough, and that's when I noticed this wasn't on right. See how you can get misfires if you have a really bad vacuum leak? There we go. I had to get the bottom released. The little bottom lip was catching on it. Now I still see a lot of water up on that boot. But when I was releasing this thermostat, a little water escaped. It poured there. And we have to know if it's still pouring out or not. I think I'm going to spray it off with air and see if it comes back. Okay, so let's follow the chain of events very closely. We've got oil packs that keep going out. And I noticed his coolant was low, so we topped up his coolant. And then the coolant started leaking, so then we had to fix a coolant leak. He's like, can we just leave the coolant level low? And I was like, if it's low enough that the coolant 
doesn't get out of the thermostat housing, that's bad. If it's low enough that it's air above the thermostat, that's really, really bad. We can't do that. we got to fix it. Because otherwise there's just a whole bunch of air in your cooling system and it can overheat and toast the engine. So, we got it fixed. I refused to record how I got rid of the cooling link on his video because it was a hack job. But then when it worked, I wish I'd recorded it. So, long story short, the reason why he had coolant leaking past his uh, coil pack was because of the bar that's underneath that alternator. The only way to remove that bar is to pull the intake. That's why the shop that was going to fix it uh, told him he had to replace his intake. It wasn't because the intake was leaky. It's because what was underneath intake was bolts. You, you can't take off that bar. So what I ended up doing is I built a wall about this big. No, let's take some exaggeration out. I built a wall about this big. And what that wall did is it was made out of Permatex Right stuff. And I just put a layer and let some dry. I put a layer and let some dry. Because part of his gasket had blown out. And it had a really tall gasket. So no wonder this leak happened. Ford should have built smaller gaskets and had the bar closer to metal to metal contact. And that way that gasket wouldn't have blown out. Because it was way, way too big. So anyway, I put... A layer and a layer and a layer of Permatec rice stacks just shaped it and shaped it and shaped it and half an hour later tried to run it and blew it out and built it up again and decided even if it's Permatex right stuff and it dries really fast that's assuming a really thin normal layer drying overnight that it's been a long time since I shot this video that coolant repair outlived his car his transmission stuff you're going to feel like you see his car again. It's actually his mother's because she has a very similar model. And that will be another video that comes out later. But I thought I'd tell the rest of the story, which took all night and waking up early to finish the next morning. Whew. See, the problem is, I, I was like, I know you're out of money, but we got to get rid of this coolant issue. And that's where the friend part came in. All right. I need my camera to somehow adjust. Personally, I can see down into that combustion chamber. I apologize. I don't know if I can get that for you. Ah, there you are. Dark and carboned up. This is our control because all the misfires were on the other side. Dark and carboned up, right? Now, if we come over to the other side where we had the issue, I see dark and carboned up dark and carboned up. Now if this intake was leaking coolant I would think that these cylinders would be cleaner. The leaks on this side of the engine it's just as dirty as on the other. So my money's on this bar, this crossover bar that I believe carries coolant to both sides of the engine that that is what's leaking. And I believe that that can be pulled separately because that, that's fully metal versus all this plastic because plastic couldn't hold that much coolant. This gets really hot. It needs to be all metal to take that. I know radiators make a lie out of me, liar out of me, but sincerely and true, it's just a crossover bar. He doesn't need an intake. If we resealed that and he still needed an intake, oh well. I would just give him that that money back into the intake. That's what I would do. So that's a fair way and that's enough that's enough evidence-based thinking to not do an intake first. I hope it doesn't head that way. It doesn't seem like it should. And this man has been very wise with me today. Hold on, I gotta have you look at me. Today I was fixing a buddy's car. But I got a lot more out of that. Unfortunately, you know, I, I actually try to want to avoid this, but I actually got attacked by a fellow human being at my work, a fellow employee. And uh, my buddy and I have really talked that out. And what I take away today is it's not my fear of him.
It's my greatest problem. It's my fear of myself. I believe in self-defense. I'm, I'm with Brian's Mobile One all the way. Anyone who watches my channel pretty much is aware of him and you know, his stand on firearms and stuff like that. I can defend myself, but I don't want to. That's what I'm afraid of. So when he checked me into a wall, I, I took a step back from him and I said, I don't want to fight you. Clearly you want to fight me, but I don't want to fight you. And I, I stayed on that course and I had to stay on that course until the shift was over because I didn't want that to be in front of the customers. And at the end of the day, I reported to my manager, and he still has his job because there was no witnesses. Whatever. I'm going to tell each and every one of you, pray for your enemies. Pray for them that despitefully use you. I don't know who he did this, but my car broke down. It's stuck at work at the moment. And uh, this story is going to be out of order because those videos are going to come out. And then this one, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll leave an answer in the description to that if it, it's confusing because it's out of order. But like he's down a window, I'm down a tiny little window, and he, he meticulously unlocked my door, or whoever he was, I don't have proof that it was him, and unlocked my front door from the inside, and went back and locked everything up. Opened my hood, cut all the wires underneath my hood, on my, my car, not my friend's car. He did all of that, and after that, the reason why I believe it was him is because he was nice to me after that. He'd help me on jobs if he saw me struggling with something. He, it's like it totally changed for him. I know he's petty enough that he could fall down, but I'm going to take the win. Even though he cut the wiring on my battery, you'll, you'll see that. I mean, he dumped bolts on the ground for the internals of my engine. Um, he cut the wiring so deep that I don't even know how to hook it back together. I'm going to have to do a help me, I know most of the guys that watch my channel are way more experienced than me actually at this point. So, you know, I'll need to know from you how to put, how to get two 10 gauge wires back together. That's ridiculous. That's a lot of work. I believe in God enough that if, if the sin of that mistake can take him from being bad at work to being good at work and we move forward, I'll take it. I'll turn the other cheek. I'm, I'm not trying to say I'm this wonderful person. You know, I, I wanted to knock him down. <laughs> I honestly did. Your but hands aren't dirty myself. for the no reason. <laughs> gotta show the, your hands aren't dirty for no reason. You got to show the hands. Oh, yeah, uh oh, yeah. it's not his first time hands being dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got a lot from my dear friend here. And I have no idea if I'll have the guts to put this out there. But some of my, uh, my Canic Great friends have put out videos where occasionally put a little wisdom of their own life and maybe I should share that so this is killing me this is so funny I keep trying to put this t coil on I keep trying to put this coil on it won't go on oh my goodness that's such a bad angle and yeah that our control to see whether the intake was bad or not was a bad angle but of course the coil won't go on Wow. <laughs> That was sweet. Oh, I still need light to see. To get it to go in a hole. Because it really is difficult. That's why I, I didn't think that there was a tool in there. Okay, one bolt on here, one bolt on here, and you're out of here, my friend. All right. Here's the funny thing about life. Sometimes you're just trying to help a friend. Sometimes you're trying to make money fixing a car. And other times you'll find that he touches your life more than you touch his car. Boy, I'd hope he touched my life more than I touched his car. Oh gosh, what does that mean? Remember, get out there and work on something. Hey, what do you think I'm staying? I'm staying dirty. Yeah. <laughs> Whose tagline is that? <laughs> Actually, he's staying dirty. He's the one that doesn't have gloves on. Hey, you're making me shake the camera. Why are you making me shake the camera? <laughs>